Assalamu alaikum everyone. Today's virtual lecture is on topic 3, index numbers. As usual, please use these slides together with your lecture notes and required textbook. Let's begin with what is an index. An index is a number that shows the relative changes in a variable or a group of variables, for example, prices, quantities, or any values between two time periods. Sometimes we call the index index number. There are many characteristics of an index. One of them is that indexes are usually expressed as a percentage. However, we don't normally write the percentage sign behind it. Besides that, there is a base period where we want to calculate index, and the index value for the base period is usually 100. And then, most indexes are usually reported to the nearest whole number or to the nearest tenth of a percent. For instance, we write index as 105 or 102 or 103.9. So you might want to know why do we want to convert our data or our values into indexes. You might want to check out your lecture notes because I've written it down there for you. Firstly, when we use indexes, um, it's basically a convenient way for us to express changes, especially in price level, for diverse group of items. Diverse meaning the, the items aren't really comparable, such as maybe a box of milk, and car. See, if you were just to look at the uh, items by itself, they're not really comparable. But if you look at the changes in the price or percentage change in prices, then it facilitates the comparison of those items. Secondly, when we convert our data to indexes, uh, it often makes it easier for us to understand, especially if our values are exceptionally large. For instance, if we're dealing with profits which are in millions of ringgit, so instead of saying that our profits has increased by 1.235 million or something like that, we can simply say, oh, our profit has increased by 20%. Okay, so this is among the most important reason as to why we normally use uh, index. So how do we calculate index? Here I'm going to share with you the easiest form of index, which is called the simple price index. As you can see here, to calculate index is simply to find the ratio between two prices. Ratio means one price divided by the another. So here we have PT. PT is basically the price at the current period. And PO is the price at the base period. You find the ratio between these two prices and times 100. So it's actually very easy to remember. Base price should always be at the bottom, you know, base. So this is basically how we calculate simple price index. Um, so now let's move on to how to interpret index. Say you calculate this index and let's say the answer you get one. Uh, 105. So how do we interpret index? So here you can see whenever the value is more than 100, it indicates an increase. So how do we interpret 105? We simply say there's a 5% increase in the price of uh, whatever item. So let's say if you calculate the index and you get 95, so what does it say here? Whenever the value of the index is below 100, it indicates a decrease. So how do we interpret 95? We can say that the price has fallen by 5%. Now let's try example 1. The prices of a statistics book for the years 1997 through 2002 are shown below. So here you're given a list of prices which are different for every year. Part A. Determine the simple price index for the years 1997 through 2002. And they also told you that 1997 is the base period. Part B, interpret the meaning of the price index for the year 1998. Now, do you remember the formula to count the simple price index? It is the ratio between the current price and the base price. So you have to take the current price over the base price times 100. Now let's try and find the price index for 1997, which is the base period. Now, in 1997, the base price is 25, and at the same time, the current price is also 25. So what do we do? It's 25 over 25 times 100. So that is why the index for the base period is always 100. Yeah, there. Okay, so now let's count the simple price indexes for the other years. So here's the table. So let's count the price index for 1998. So remember, current price over base price. The current price for 1998 is 28 ringgit. 
the base price is 25 because the base price corresponds to the base period. So times 100, you'll get 112. So I hope at this point you'll pause the video and try to calculate all of the simple price indexes yourselves. Okay, so if you finished, you can actually compare. Okay, so this is the answer. So you'll be able to get all of the simple price indexes for each year. Remember, to get all of these numbers, all you have to do is divide the current price over the base price. Don't forget, times 100. Okay. So next question, interpret. Remember, how do we interpret? There are basically two things you need to talk about. One is the direction, whether it's um, above 100 or below 100. Above 100 means there's an increase in the price level. Below 100, there's a fall in the uh, price level. And another thing that you need to look at is the magnitude. Magnitude or the figure of um, how much it is. Okay. Okay, let me just finish writing. Okay, so now having said this, so they ask you to find what is the meaning of the price index for 1998. Okay, so let's look at the index for 1998, which is 112. So look at 112. Is it above 100 or below 100? It's above 100. How much above 100? So you just take 112 minus 100, so it's 12. Therefore, how do you interpret? Okay, let me just erase this for a while. The price of statistics books has increased by 12% over the last uh, one year. Now let's look at the types of price indexes. There are two types of price indexes, unweighted index and weighted index. In an unweighted index, the quantities are not considered. In other words, we will only calculate the changes in price. Here you will look at two methods of how to compute an unweighted price index. They are simple average of the price index and simple aggregate index. Now pay attention to the different keywords, average and aggregate. Remember, both of these methods have the same objective, which is to find the average change for a group of items. Okay, so in case you're wondering when do we want to use simple average of the price index is if you want to find the general or if you want to find the average price changes for a group of items. Now, see how it's different from example one. In example one, you're only given one item, which is the statistics books. So because there's only one item, we can simply use the simple price index. What if you want to find the average change in price for a group of items such as stats books, math book, micro, macro and accounting. So in that case, this is when we use the simple average of the price index. So here's the formula. What you need to do is simply find the total or sum all of the price index of each item and then divide it by the number of items in question. Okay. Now, alternatively, instead of adding the price index, Sometimes you may want to add the prices, okay? So which is the second method, simple aggregate index. It is also known as the simple composite price index. In other words, here is instead of adding the index, we want to add or sum the prices for the uh, items of two time periods here. So we add all of the prices in the current period, divide by all of the prices in the base period times 100. So here, if you remember, the simple price index, the formula is simply the current price over the base price, right? This is the formula for the simple price index times 100. So this is basically the base for the simple aggregate index. So what you all need to do is simply find the sum of all of the prices in the current period over the sum of all of the prices in the base period. Okay, so here um, there are also, of course, advantages and disadvantages of this method. So, for more information, kindly read the textbook. If you have any questions, you can ask me in class. So far, we have learned three different kinds of indexes one is the simple price index. And we've looked at the two different alternative measures of unweighted index, which are simple average of the price index and simple aggregate index. So let's compare between these three. Now let's see here we have a table that lists 
different kind of items as well as their individual prices for two different time periods. Now here if you look on the right hand side they have already calculated for you the simple price index. Remember how to find the simple price index? It's simply PT over PO times 100 or the price in the current period over the price of the base period times 100. Very simple. Now let's say you want to calculate the simple average of the price index. What you need to do is you sum all of the price index. See all of these are simple price index. So if you add all of the indexes divide by how many items there are in this case it's six so you will get the simple average of the price index this is the second type of index that we just learned and thirdly if you want to find the simple aggregate index all you need to do is find the aggregate prices for the base period and here's the aggregate prices of the current period find the ratio between them times 100 so here you will get the simple average of the indexes Sorry, simple aggregate of the indexes. Okay, guys, just remember these two, simple average and simple aggregate, they are both unweighted indexes. Now let's try example two. This is an example of an unweighted aggregate price index. A dealer sells three different types of machines. The unit prices for the years 1996 and 2001 are shown below. So you're given the prices for small machines, medium machines, and large machines, and you are given PO and PT. So it's understood normally that if you put it as PO, so it's understood that 1996 is the base period and 2001 is the current period. So the question is compute an unweighted aggregate price index for the machines. So why don't you pause the video and try to do it first? Okay, so let's say you've done it. So this is the formula of the unweighted aggregate price index, sum of all of the current price over the sum of all of the base price times 100. So where's your current prices here? So 12,000 plus 17,000 plus 22,000 over the sum of the base prices, 9,000 plus 14,000 plus 18,000 times 100. So you'll get 124.39. So this is basically the answer to part one. Now the second part is to interpret your finding. Remember to interpret indexes you need to talk about two things. One is the direction. Is it above 100 or below 100? Anything above 100 is an increase in the price. Anything below 100 is a fall in the price. And of course the second thing that you need to talk about is the magnitude. How big is the increase or how small is the increase? In this case it's 124.39, which means there's an increase in the price by how much? By 24.39%. So how do you write it down? The prices of machines have increased by 24.39% over the period 1996 to 2001. Let's look at the second type of uh, price index, which is the weighted index. Now, one of the drawbacks of unweighted price index is that we need to assume that all of the values are of equal importance. Sometimes not all items are equal. Uh, therefore, we need to assign some sort of weights uh, so that we can measure the changes in prices, uh, sorry, changes of the items more accurately. So these weights are normally in the form of quantities. So in other words, weighted index are basically uh, when we include both the changes in price and quantities of the items. Okay, so please compare this with the unweighted index where only the changes in prices are considered. Here we will look at two types of or two measures on how to calculate the weighted index and they are the last Paris index and Pashi index. Last Paris index basically uses base period quantities as weights. Okay, so here's how the formula looks like. If you notice here, QO, QO. QO refers to base period quantities. We include the base period quantities into the original formula. If you were to ignore the, see, if you ignore the changes here in the quantity, what you have is basically the simple aggregate index, right? Sum of current prices over sum of base prices times 100. So you actually have the ag um, simple aggregate index. But if you include the weights, specifically the weights of the base period, we will have the last Pierce index. 
there. So the second type or the second measure of weighted index is the Pashi index. So here what we do is we basically um, use the current period quantities as weights. Here. So instead of QO, we use QT. So again, just like before, if we assume or if we ignore the quantities here, what we have is actually the simple aggregate index. Okay, but now we include the quantities as weights, so what we have is the Pashi index. Okay, so basically this is uh, the main difference between the weighted index and the unweighted index. So I repeat, unweighted index, we only find changes in the prices of the items, whereas for weighted index, we include the quantities as well. So what kind of uh, weighted index? It depends on the quantities. If our focus is on the base period quantities here, so we are actually applying the last pairs index. If our quantities are the current period quantities, then we are using the Pashi index. Let's compare between the last pairs index and the Pashi index. Now, since the last pairs index only focuses on the quantities from the base period, so what it effectively does is that they only look at changes in the prices over the long period of time. In other words, the last pairs index gives a more meaningful comparison over time if our focus is to look at changes in price. However, uh, it does not take into account changes in the consumption patterns because we're only focusing on the base period quantities. Uh, so if our objective is to look at changes in people's buying habits, meaning we need to look at the current quantities, we may not need or we may not be able to use the last pairs index. Instead, we should use the Pashi index because under Pashi index, uh, since it uses quantities from the current period, it reflects current buying habits. So which method is better? Well, it certainly depends on our objective. If our objective is to look at changes in price, so perhaps it's better to use the last pairs index. If our objective is to look at the current buying patterns of people, perhaps it's better to use the Pashi index. Um, sometimes some people would like to have um, a middle ground, so that's why we have the third uh, method to calculate weighted index, which is called the Fisher's Ideal Index. So here what happens is uh, Fisher uh, offsets the shortcomings of both the last pairs and Pashi's indexes. So the Fisher's index was proposed to find the middle ground. In other words, Fisher's index is the geometric mean of both last pairs and Pashi index. So this is the formula. We basically take uh, the last pairs index that we calculated, we multiply with the Pashi index, and then we find the uh, root. So in other words, to find the Fisher's ideal index, you need to calculate the last pairs index and the Pashi index first. So although it provides the average or the geometric mean, but because we have to calculate these two first, um, it may not be an, a practical or an ideal index as well. Uh, so please pay attention and read the advantages and disadvantages of all Pashi index, last pairs index and Fisher's ideal index, which can be found in the textbook. Okay, so now let's look at example three. This is quite a lengthy example, but it asks a lot of questions and it's quite comprehensive. So as you can see here, you are given a table uh, that shows um, the prices and quantities for selected vegetables for the years 1995 and 1999. And they told you that 1995 is the base period. So the first question is calculate the simple price indexes for each vegetable. B, find the simple aggregate index for the four years. Uh, C, calculate and interpret the last pairs index. D, calculate and interpret the Pashi index. And finally, they ask you to find the Fisher's index. So um, I hope you can pause the video and try to attempt uh, the question first before uh, looking at the solutions. Okay, so if you've done, Let's look at part A, simple price index for each vegetable. So what you got to do is you look, uh, we've got four vegetables here, cabbage, carrots, spinach, and chili. So for each vegetable, you need to calculate the simple price index. Remember, the formula for simple price index is PT over PO, the current price over the base price times 100. So for cabbage, let's look at cabbage, um, PT, the current price is 0 0.05 here over the base price, which is 0 0.06, and that is how we got 83.3. So if you were to do the rest, this would be the answer. 1204 carrots, 90 for spinach, and 166.674 chili. Okay? 
Now for part B, find the simple aggregate price index. Remember, simple aggregate for the price index is we find the total price for the current period over the total price of all of the uh, base prices times 100, which is this one. Okay, see here? The total prices for the current period over the total prices for the base period times 100. Okay, so um, make sure you look at the tables properly. Here's the current prices. Where's the current price? Current price is 99. So here's all of the current prices. Divide by all of the base prices here. So you will get 128.8. Okay. Now for C, calculate and interpret the last period's price index. Remember, for last period's, we focus on uh, base period quantities. Right? So this is the formula. Base period quantities. So what you need to do is, here you uh, multiply all of the current price with the base quantities. So let's look at cabbage first. So remember, this is our base period. This is our current period. So we look at the... Um, PT price for the uh, here current price is 0 0.05 times the base quantity 2000 and then we take this one 0 0.12 times 200 and then we look at here 0 0.18 times 400 and finally 0 0.5 times 100 so this is the top part or the numerator so for the denominator um, we now we still use the same base quantity but we will look now at the base price so 0. Point, let me use another color 0. 0.6 0. 0.06 times 2000 0. 0.1 times 200 0. 0.2 times 400 and 0. 0.3 times 100 okay can you see the difference so for here we will put at the denominator so you find the product on the top part Okay, add them up and then you divide by the sum of the products for the bottom or the denominator and you will get 98.4. So this is last period. So they ask you to interpret as well, last period. So how do you interpret this? Remember, we look at two things where we want to interpret, whether it's above or below 100 and the magnitude. So as you can see here, 98.4 is below 100. So there's a fall in the prices of vegetables. By how much? You just deduct from 100. So basically, the prices of vegetables have fallen or have reduced by 1.6% over the last four-year period. Now for Pashi index, the formula is we want to focus on the current base quantities. So PT times QT for all of the vegetables at the numerator divided by PO times QT for all the vegetables for your denominator. So do it one by one, like that, like so. And you'll get 107.03. Remember, I'm just going through it very quickly. So you're supposed to uh, to be pausing and stopping the videos and do it on your own. Okay, um, it's more very important for you to try it out on your own. So they also ask you to interpret the Pashi index. So 107.03 is above 100. Therefore, we'll have an increase in the prices of vegetables by how much? By 7.03. So in other words, the prices of vegetables have increased by 7.03 percent over the last four year period. And finally, Fisher's index. So here I didn't put any working. I expect you to do it on your own. Fisher's index is basically the geometric mean of the last pairs index. Okay, you take the last pairs index, you multiply with the Pashi index, multiply them, then you find the um, square root. Uh, therefore, you'll get the Pashi index, uh, sorry, the Fisher's index, which is 102.62. So if you're asked to interpret that, you can just see that the uh, prices of vegetables have increased uh, using the fishes index by 2.62% over the last four-year period. Okay, so we've come to the end of our virtual lecture. Um, before I meet you in our next class, I would like you to try example four on your own. Okay, so example four is, um, is actually a past your question. Uh, it's quite lengthy, but um, as you read it, you will be able to identify that it's actually, yes, it's a weighted index example. So please, please do try example four, because when I see you in next class, we're just going to uh, discuss the answer. Or perhaps maybe I'll call you to do them. So yes, I um, hope you try example four before we go on and finish off uh, the index topic. Okay, so I'll see you in the next class. Assalamualaikum.